After the dramatic market fall at the end of 2018, crypto markets were pretty calm and flat. We talked to eToro's Maddie Greenspan, Patrick Husser from Crypto Broker AG, and Anthony Pompliano from Morgan Creek Digital and asked them what was the reason behind such low volatility and what to expect in the nearest weeks. We were looking at volumes across the four big exchanges, Bitstamp, Kraken, Coinbase, and Bitfinex. And over the past six months, those exchanges had volumes of roughly 109,000 coins per month. January only produced 65,000 coins. Then as well, focus on Ether dollar, which has some erratic price movements around the $100 mark. We think this is linked to the MakerDAO stablecoin. There, there are some liquidation levels just below the $100 mark um, on this MakerDAO uh, stable coin. We will start with Ether BTC. There we can see that we took out recent lows in December 2018. The chart looks very weak and we think there is more weakness to come. There is also some erratic price movements on that chart, but that is driven by Ether dollar. Our main focus is still the MACD charts and the advanced decline line charts. If you look at the Bitcoin MACD, you can clearly see that there is some strength around versus the altcoins. That hasn't changed. If you look at the MACDs for the altcoins, ranking 2 to 10 and 11 to 50, those are clearly in negative territory. And last but not least, the smoothed out advanced decline line, the purple one, trading below the 0.5 level, which is a negative sentiment for the altcoins. And I believe that it really right now what we're seeing is uh, the markets trying to find a more fair value that accurately um, can be that, that can accurately be uh, described as what uh, as what uh, the cryptos are actually worth um, according to adoption and real use. I believe that we're testing the lower limits at the moment. I think it's pretty clear that the market is trying to find a bottom for Bitcoin. For example, we found we find a very clear level of support. Uh, at three thousand dollars a coin, certainly it could dip a little bit below that. Um, but but if I had to describe it, what I would say is that right now it's looking for a floor. I think it is more likely than not that we have not hit the bottom yet. The market was incredibly frothy throughout 2017. 2018, we were able to wash a lot of that out. But I still think there's a little bit of that um, unreasonable. Uh, you know, expectations and, and projects that shouldn't really be valued where they are today. You know, we've, we've got a little more to flush out. And so until that happens, I, I just think that we're going to follow that macro trend of the bear market. Um, and eventually we will hit a bottom. We have a pretty new, uh, new tool provided by Ledger X. Uh, which is the Bitcoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin VIX. Basically, they call it the fear index. Just like in the stock market, they have a volatility index. Um, and this is over the last three months. So we can see that you know, during the big fall in December, uh, we saw a big uh, hike in volatility. Uh, and over the last month, really, the volatility has come down a lot. It's still not where it was before that big dip. Um, but you can see it kind of uh, leveling off at the moment. I think volatility uh, can't be something that is persistent, right? So you can't have an asset that just swings um, kind of 50% either direction day in, day out for years, right? And so what you end up getting is you get these uh, short spurts of, uh, of high volatility, and then you get these periods of kind of a more lulled um, time frame. And so in 2017, for example, a majority of the um, the upward volatility, right? The appreciation of price was attributable to like 10 or less days. And so I think what we're seeing now is this, uh, this downward price pressure from the high of 20,000 to where we are today. There's only been a certain number of days that have contributed to that. It hasn't been highly volatile every single day. And so if you remember back, I think it was October of 2018, uh, Bitcoin was actually less volatile than the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, um, and, and so I think that there's these periods where uh, the asset will be highly volatile, but then there's these longer periods where we won't get volatility. And I think that's where we are right now. We had a pop in, in Ripple the other day of 10%. Um, basically, it, it had erased the, get the, uh, the losses from the previous week in, in about an hour. It was uh, something to see. What's being perpetuated uh, on the social media at the moment is this is due 
to a partnership that happened between uh, Swift Banking System and R3, which is, a, which is a payment startup. R3 is connected to Ripple Labs. They've just announced a kind of partnership in December. Um, overall, what we're looking at is uh, uh, basically over the last year or two years, we've been witnessing a battle within the payments sec the, within the pay within the payments industry. Um, and what we're noticing just now is that uh, rather than a battle, it's kind of a, a network where there's a lot of major players. They're all fighting for market share, but at the same time, they're growing a kind of uh, interoperable network where um, you know payments will be uh, you know using the power of technology much quicker, much faster, much cheaper down the line based on those partnerships. And uh, what it seems is that Ripple Labs is increasingly uh, gaining uh, gaining stature within that network. When it comes to kind of short-term price appreciation, you know, especially double digits like we saw with uh, XRP uh, recently, most of that is driven by the public announcements. Um, I tend to think that public announcements uh, are able to affect price, whether it's public equities or cryptocurrencies. The difference is the public markets, we see a lot of people who, uh, there's just better price discovery. There's more people who understand how that public announcement will actually affect the bottom line. There's better projections and accuracy. And so in crypto, we don't have that yet. And so what you get is more volatile swings on stock, uh, on uh, prices um, compared to stocks. But uh, over time, I think we'll get better at trying to price some of this stuff in or the market will become less volatile or less reactive to those types of announcements because uh, people will have a better understanding of how they actually impact the underlying um, asset or fundamentals. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.